Hi everyone, welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining pipes of Unix system programming. So pipes are mainly used for uh, inter-process communication. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. And please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to share the video with your friends. So let me begin the explanation of pipes. So pipes are mainly used to provide inter-process communication. So inter-process communication means if any two process wants to communicate with each other, they can communicate with each other using the pipe, right? Pipe serves as the bridge between the two processes. It is possible. So pipes have two limitations. So what are the limitations? So historically pipes have been half duplex. Half duplex means data flows in only one direction. But some system today they provide full duplex but uh, it is not supported in all the systems. So it may affect the portability right if you assume like that. So uh, even today most of the system are half duplex that means data flows in only one direction right. And one more important thing one more disadvantage is pipe can be used only between the processes that have a common ancestor. In simple words, pipe can be created between the parent and the child. Right? Normally a pipe is created by a process that process calls the fork and the pipe is used between the parent and the child. Right? You know that fork is mainly used to uh, create the process. Right? So in simple words, pipe can be only used between the parent and the child, right? So these are the disadvantages of a pipe. So nowadays we are using half duplex pipes, right? Uh, half duplex pipes are the most commonly used form of IPC, right? So if two process wants to communicate with each other, they can use half duplex pipes, right? So Every time when we type a command right in a pipeline, what happens means uh, the shell creates a separate process for each command, right? For a, because if you want to send the data to the standard output, you need one pipe. For in the same way, if you want to uh, read from the standard input, you can use another pipe. So what I'm trying to say is, so. Right, it is half duplex. That's why you can you have to create separate separate pipes for sending the data or for getting the data. That means for reading the data or for writing the data. You have to create two separate pipes because it is half duplex. So how to create a pipe? So you can create a pipe using a pipe function. You can see. So this is the function. So what is the argument for that pipe means the file descriptors. So because uh, you have to create a pipe between uh, two processes, right? So uh, for that process in Unix, uh, each process can be considered as a file, right? So that's why uh, file descriptors can be passed as an argument while creating the pipe. So this pipe function returns zero if it's created successfully. If a pipe is not created successfully, it will return minus one, right? So here, uh, two file descriptors are uh, returned through the file dis argument. I told you already, right? The argument is a file descriptors. Uh, here we are using two file descriptors. So one is file descriptor of zero. Uh, mainly, I am going to use file descriptor of zero for reading, and file descriptor of one is open for writing right so remember uh, because it is half duplex pipe is a half duplex right so if you read you need one file descriptor if you want to read you need one file descriptor and if you want to write also you want another file descriptor so for reading you are going to use a file descriptor of zero for writing you are going to use a file descriptor one and one more important thing, the output of the file descriptor 1 is the input for the file descriptor of 0 because file descriptor is uh, 0 is used for reading, right? That's why. So the output of write is the input for reading, 
right hope you are understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section right so this picture shows the two ways of creating a half duplex pipe you can see there uh, uh, the left figure uh, shows the two ends of the pipe connected in a single process here two ends of the pipe that is ft0 and ft1 is connected to a single process actually it is useless because if you use a pipe to uh, write send the information between two processes then it is useful if you are creating a pipe within the same process uh, it is useless actually right so the right half of the figure shows the pipe right flows through the kernel c you can see so pipe is created here between different different, uh, different processes so data will be uh, data will flow within the pipe this is the second right case so i told you a pipe in a single process is next to useless right you know that and one more important thing the fstat function retains file type of fifo for the file descriptor of either end of a pipe we can test for a pipe with s yes, is fifo macro if you want to check right what type of file it is if it is whether it is a fifo or a different type of file you can check that using the uh, macro s yes, s yes, underscore is fifo it will check whether the file is a fifo file or not right and normally the process that calls the pipe right that process calls the fork once it calls the fork that's so right so uh, the, the ipc channel will be created from parent to child or child to parent when you call the fork obviously the ipc uh, will be created between the parent to child or child to parent vice versa is possible so what happens after the fork depends on which uh, direction of data flow we want for example uh, if you want to read uh, then the flow of data will be different if we want to write then also the flow of data will be different it depends for example see for a pipe from parent to child for a pipe from parent to child assume that you want to create the pipe from parent to child so what happens the parent closes the read end of the pipe that is fd0 and the child closes the write end that is fd1 we will see that see uh, pipe from parent to child if you want to send the data from parent to child what happens so it is very simple um, that is parent right uh, parent closes the read end of the pipe that is fd0 so as you can see fd0 is not there in the parent that is it is closed because i need a pipe from parent to child fd0 is closed in a child in a child right end is going to closed see only fd0 is there fd1 is not there here right so parent can right parent can what parent can do right to the pipe see parent can do writing to the pipe child can read from the pipe see thereby parent and child are communicating with each other how they can communicate if we, if, we, if child wants the information parent will send that information to the pipe that is parent will write that information to the pipe then after writing child will read the information that is written to the pipe from the parent hope you are understanding in this way parent and a child can communicate using the pipe ipc can be possible hope you are understanding guys see for a pipe from the child to the parent here the vice versa uh, this one is for parent to child now vice versa from child to the parent uh, it is a reverse process parent closes fd1 and the child closes fd0 here uh, you can see here child closes fd0 now you can hear fd0 instead of fd0 fd1 will be there here instead of fd1 fd0 will be there so thereby uh, the vice versa communication is possible the uh, information 
flow from child to parent hope you are understanding guys and one more important thing when one end of a pipe is closed the following two rules apply what is that if you read from a price whose right end has been closed read return zero to indicate an end of the file after all the data has been read it is very simple if you read from a pipe if we want to read from a pipe whose right end has to be closed you know that read return zero when you are reading in a simple words when you are reading from a pipe if it returns zero what it indicates it indicates the end of the file that means the data is read all the data is read so when it returns zero you can uh, assume that the all the data is read and it is the end of the file and next if you write to a pipe whose read end has been closed the signal signal pipe is generated so right when you are writing when you are writing right what happens means the signal signal pipe is generated if you either ignore the signal or catch it and return from the signal handler so right returns minus 1 with error number set to e pipe hope you are understanding when a write is not successful it returns minus 1 and error number will be set to e pipe hope you are understanding so when a writing is saying when a writing is happening it will generate a signal sig pipe hope you are understanding if it is successful no problem we, we, but if it's error if it's a error if it return minus 1 the error number is set to e pipe right and next is when we are writing to a pipe Uh, right the constant pipe buffer specify the kernel pipe buffer size because for every pipe the size should be defined right so the size of the pipe is defined in a constant pipe underscore buffer right so this is this is going to uh, sorry this is going to uh, tell the size of the pipe tell the size of the pipe that is pipe underscore buffer so this is a programming example it shows the code to create a pipe between parent and the child and sending the data down the pipe uh, it is a very simple program you can see i am using a two file descriptor that is ftf2 uh, you can see uh, if file descriptor if a file, uh, file is not there it will return pipe error otherwise uh, see Uh, PID greater than zero. PID greater than zero means parent is going to create a child, right? So you can see here. So it is writing to the file descriptor FD one. You know that uh, I explained this process. Parent has to close FD zero. So see here. You can see see this. it is closing the fd0 parent to send the data to the child parent what it is doing it is closing fd0 you can see next it is writing to the pipe that is fd1 it is using another file descriptor fd1 what it is writing it is writing uh, the hello world this is the information next after that you can see child is closing the fd1 child is closing the fd1 parent is closing the fd0 child has to close the fd1 see fd1 is not there it has to close so that's why child is closing the fd1 so after that if you want to read that information see you can read that information it is in the fd zero because for reading you need fd zero right where you can read from the standard output so it will pipe will write to the standard output you can read from that standard output very simple so pipe will write to the standard output you can read from that standard output very simple procedure if you have any doubt please post your doubts in the comment section so so here we are uh, uh, using the file descriptors uh, directly right so you know that the child runs uh, here the i don't want to confuse you guys it is a very simple program so you will create parent will uh, right 
so parent has to close fd0 child has to close fd1 then parent and child can communicate with each other using fd1 and fd0 you can see here so parent uh, used fd1 uh, here uh, child used fd0 right thereby uh, both parent and child can communicate with each other right next how to synchronize this uh, for example how to tell the parent uh, the child is not ready or how to tell the child that parent is not ready how to synchronize them properly right when a child and child is ready parent can communicate or when a, when a parent is ready child can communicate how to tell them that uh, whether they are ready whether they are synchronized for that it's a very simple uh, we I, I, I use a function called tell wait uh, tell parent wait parent tell child wait child very simple see these are the functions that let a parent and child to synchronize properly if you want to tell the parent you can use tell parent right if you want to tell the child you can use a tell child if you want to if your child wants to wait you can use wait child if a parent wants to wait you can use wait parent see these are the functions mainly used to uh, synchronize the data flow right right next uh, you can see here uh, for example uh, in this diagram we can create two pipes because of before the fork see here parent and a child is there uh, the parent writes the character p so you can see parent writes the character p P across the top pipe when tell child is called right you are telling the child the parent is telling the child right that means it's going to write the character P and the child writes the character C you can see across the bottom pipe when the tell parent is called it is telling the parent it's writing the C right Hope you are understanding. Parent is writing, uh, right? Parent writing the character P, child writing the character C. The corresponding wait functions do a blocking read for the single character. For example, here we are. We can use wait function to do the blocking. When child, when parent is uh, writing, I can block a child. Uh, when a child is writing, I can block a parent. That is possible right it is simple huh? it is a simple procedure so hope you understood the concepts suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video